right everybody, so if I put an electric current down a coil of wire it'll set up a magnetic field and that's what a solenoid or an electromagnet is. Now the minute I turn that current off of course the magnetic field collapses but as it collapses it drives an electric current and in electronics terms that's what an inductor is. Now an inductor is a way of storing energy in a magnetic field in an electrical circuit. But there's another way and that's in a capacitor. In a capacitor it stores the energy in an electrical field but when the electrical field collapses it again pushes a current. If I attach these two together so I have an inductor connected to a capacitor one will push the other forever. Unless of course there's resistance and in a wire there's resistance and so they die out and it's called a tank circuit or a ringing circuit or an oscillating circuit and it will push that current backwards and forwards as the energy is first stored in a magnetic field and then driven to store in an electrical field and they're absolutely fascinating circuits used all over the place and it occurred to me that there must be a mechanical equivalent of this and of course there is. If we take a flywheel and a spring we can do exactly the same thing that we were doing with an inductor and a capacitor. In a tank circuit the current is stored in the electromagnetic field and the inductor as that collapses it's storing the voltage in an electrostatic field and the capacitor and the two oscillate between each other. In the mechanical version then the flywheel is storing the energy and of course that gives a push to the spring. When it goes round the spring returns that push by giving a little flick to the flywheel and so it too is oscillating away. Now I didn't come up with this, this is by Bailiwick 1 and he called it his spring powered motor or the dominant flywheel and I'll put a link to that in the bottom and the description bar so you can see the original video where this came from. But in the video this thing just ran and ran and ran and of course I was immensely interested in that and thought I'd have to give that a go of making my own copy. Because basically it's little more than a flywheel that's free to spin and a spring. Bailiwick made his from spare parts in his part box. So I thought I'd turn to Tinkercad and draw up the bits I needed in Tinkercad. As you can see it really isn't very many parts, it's basically a cradle. So let's put that together. So I printed those bits out and to make this I took a barbell wedge. Now that bit there is a plug for the centre of the barbell and I just pushed it in so it's a very tight fit. If you're going to make this yourself and you choose a different barbell weight that plug may not fit so you might have to resize it. So once we've got our flywheel then I took this section here and of course what I've put in there is uh, a pin. It's a pin for shelf support. It's 6 millimeters by 25 millimeters. I've used this before so I had some of them kicking around and I've got a bit of 8 millimeter bar 50 millimeters long right there and that will thread through two skater bearings 22 mil by 8 mil which go in these holes here and that will thread into there to give me the support now we want to just push it away a little bit so i've got two eight millimeter um washers right there they go on first and then your barbell goes on then you drop another couple of eight millimeter washers in there so it spaces it properly and then we push on our other bearing and then you'll notice there's two caps, they're three millimetres, they go over the bearing on the, once the bearing's pushed in and they push the bearing down to stop it moving in and out. A bit of super glue to hold those on and that is your flywheel put together. Now to hold the spring we've got this bit here and that bit will glue on there but we're not quite sure where it's got to go yet so there's a little bit of sliding around to do and for the spring I'm using a standard hacksaw blade and you stuff the hacksaw blade in the slot there and position it so it's near to here and so that it just comes to the edge there so that when that turns it just hits the spring and then the spring obviously will push it back up again. We need to position as I say so it's just a little bit away from there and then we can glue all that in place and we'll have our spring. And once we've glued it in this incidentally is 120 millimeters long. Once we've glued it in then it's ready to go. Now you notice there's like some magnets there. They act as a weight and that weight is a tuning weight and when you get the tuning right it's amazing actually. So you've 
Slide those up and down until you tune it and it'll change in its tuning for things like length of spring, material of spring, how thick the spring, how much weight there is, how heavy your flywheel is, etc, etc. So there's going to be variety in this, but that weight allows you to tune it and all we have to do then is give that a spin. awesome anyway i hope you enjoyed the video if you fancy giving that a go then the files are in thingiverse and of course the link is in the description below <laughs> thank you very much for watching and please do remember to like and subscribe